Hello and welcome to this BFI at Home Q&A. My name is Amon Warman and I'm a contributing editor and columnist at Empire Magazine. Tonight, I am joined by Benjamin Cleary, Mahershala Ali, and Naomi Harris to talk about Swan Song. Uh, ben, I want to start with you. I know this film is born from your personal experiences. What made you decide to turn those experiences into a screenplay? Well, I think that um, when you, you know, I, I, I sort of, uh, I lost three friends when I was, when I was younger, 19, 20, 21, three summers in a row, and um, witnessed the, what the, the ripples of grief that spread out to everyone who's left behind, what that does. And, um, you know, I think that having no goodbye and, and then living, living life after that, um, I think I started to, to really um, catastrophize constantly about like what would happen if someone I loved passed away or what would happen to my family if something happened to me. And so I guess in answer to the question, it's, it's a personal story, but for me a, as, a, as a writer, you, um, you, you end up, those things bubble up, you know, eventually and you shine a light on stuff that, that can be quite painful. And even though Swan Song is a, a totally imagined premise, of course, near future premise, um, it, I felt myself in it. I felt emotions in it there that I, I, I was going to have to face and, and get into the, the script in a way. And then you hope that you imbue that into it. And then all of your wonderful collaborators um, will, will, will take it and, and sort of um, feel that in it. Um, you know. And I think what really um, drew me to it, though, was as I started to get into it and realized that this was gonna be about someone who had to try and decipher whether this other him was truly him, that that would let us weave in this beautiful love story, you know, and really speak about the whole breadth of a life and a meditation on memory and, and love and loss and, and sacrifice. And so, you know, um, seeing what um, Naomi and Mahershala built as um, Poppy and Cameron and that chemistry and the layers of that, relationship was incredible to um to to watch unfold after having thought about all that through the the development of the pro of the uh, project 100 percent uh Mahershala this shocked me when it when I realized it but this is your first lead role uh in the film which is incredible how long did you spend deliberating on what that project should be and what made you decide that this was the right film for your first lead role well I don't know if I spent a lot of time deliberating which project that should be. I just think you know what's right for you when you read it, when it comes to you, or you, there's things that you respond to or projects or opportunities that really resonate with you. And so just through the the course or the path of, of, of building a career, um, being fortunate to be able to work um, 20 plus years now, um, eventually I, I got to a place where, you know, I started getting roles where I was more present. And so this is, it's just taken this long to <laughs> kind of climb the ladder where you're, you know, being offered uh, more responsibility. And so this was the one that came to me uh, at the right time. And it was th the right script with the right director. And, um, it, it was just it's just a special story and so I was just so happy to to jump on board and 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 have a wonderful opportunity to work with Naomi again as well so <laughs> absolutely well I wanted to ask you both about that you worked together on Moonlight the incredible Barry Jenkins film what was something that struck you working with each other on that film and was there anything new that you learned about each other working with each other on this film and Naomi let's start with you um, so we only worked together, I think it was, was it only a day, Mahershala? It was, it was two days, but it was the first, you know, I think I worked with you your first night. Uh -huh. And then I did, we did like one other little piece on another day. So we worked on two different days, but it was, it was, it was quick, but dense. Right. Okay. <laughs> and intense. Always yeah. the whole movie, that whole movie was dense. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, so we worked together so briefly on that on that movie that um, 
I, I you know I, I obviously got a sense of what an extraordinary actor Mahershala is, but I really wanted the opportunity to do something where I got to work with him, you know, on a longer basis and, you know, really explore characters together and um, go on a, a real journey. And that's what Swan Song provided, which was amazing. Um, and what I really discovered um, during the process was that we work in a very similar way um, because neither of us really like rehearsing. And, um, and we don't really like talking about the script. We just much more kind of like, we do our preparation separately and in private. And then we wanna come and just dive in, let all ego go, be totally vulnerable and just see what happens in the moment. And um, I really love to work like that because I think you get just magic you know because it's all spontaneous and you don't know what the other actor is going to deliver so you have to be completely centered in the moment you have to be and you're constantly on your toes figuring out like what's going to happen next you know um and that's fun you know um and I think a lot of actors don't like to work in that way because it's quite a scary way to work but um I was I felt so privileged that Mahershala does like to work like that and also that we had amazing Ben who was willing to let us do that because it's you know as a director I think it can be terrifying not knowing like what is the interpretation of the characters that these actors are going to deliver and um, what's going to you know what's the interpretation of the scene how's it going to go but he was so generous and um just allowed us to you know honor our own different ways of you know finding our characters and finding the truth in the moment which I loved. You, you. I quickly understood in working on Moonlight with Naomi I just quickly understood how how committed um, Naomi is and was, um, and just little to no space for ego, just jumping in and and trying things. There's no warming up, and that that had a lasting impression on me. However quick our time was on Moonlight, and I walked into uh swan song expecting that same sort of approach <laughs> and it, it was exactly that and and what i loved was in moonlight we were working we were working in a story and playing characters that had had definitely had some some stress and toxicity in their lives and so there was there were some very real fractures uh, in their lives. And what I loved about this family and these characters was so much about the film was about being whole and staying whole and trying to, to keep a family together. And so, yeah, we had a wonderful time working together and, 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 and just, again, seeing what Naomi brought to Moonlight, she did the, she did the same thing in terms of her approach with, uh, with Swan Song and, and even greater. Absolutely. It was incredible to watch just jumping in on that because I remember I was just thinking about it the other day about how we started. Right. And I remember fighting to have uh, a day where we would just do an improv day, a half day shoot of the wedding stuff. Right. Um, and it was all improv. I was given some scenarios and we were all riffing together on the day and everything. But I remember we started rolling and all this prep and all of these great conversations we'd had and everything, but then just seeing what both of you were creating straight away in front of the camera was just phenomenal. And seeing what, what was amazing too, was like seeing that the, the, how his teammates, his acting teammates, you, you would push each other into these great places and I'd see things develop and then there'd be little, and it was just from that moment on that chemistry and seeing it, it was, it was, it was really, I mean, if I was already excited, I just, it was just after that, I knew, wow, this is going to be incredible. Then seeing it as it went through for a writer, you write words and then to see them, what you've imagined for it surpassed every single day was incredible. I'd be like wiping my, wiping my tears away after calling cut and look around, see a whole crew of people just, just welling up at, at what you, you know, both of you were, were creating in front of um, camera. So Anyway, from my point of view, it was just, uh, it was, it was, it was a magic in the air, really. That's incredible. Uh, ben, you mentioned that, you know, this is set in the near future. What type of conversations did you have with your cinematographer, I think his name is Masanobu Takayanagi, when it came to realizing your vision for what the near future may look like? 
Yeah, well, it was a big, that was a big part of our prep and a big part of everything was really because this is such a human story um, and that the love story is at the center of it. Um, but it, it has a, a near future sort of sci-fi, uh, you know, element to it. I always wanted to create a world that felt relatable to today and never felt like too far out of what we recognize from today's world. So all the technological decisions, all the aesthetic choices were always made um, with a view to being one click on from what we have now, right? We know what Zoom is. Zoom just became augmented reality instead, right? We know what getting a cab is like. The cab was self-driving, it wasn't flying, right? The lab had to feel like a calm, inviting place uh, somewhere without banks of screens or looking like the inside of a spaceship. I really wanted to keep it all um, grounded. I worked with our, our wonderful um, production designer, Annie Bouchamp, um, to create those spaces. And then Massa, myself and Annie worked together to try and create you know, for instance, the lighting feeling like Cam, but at, cer at certain times mirroring the emotions of, of Cam as he's going through, you know, some of the things he's going through in the interview scenes, not to go into too many spoilers on it, but, you know, that was all a really big uh, part of the, the discussion to try and create a relatable world so that the human story at the heart of this could, could flourish. Mm -hmm. Mahershala, is there any futuristic sci-fi element from this film that you wish we had today? <laughs> no <laughs> it all makes me nervous it all makes me nervous um I, you know i the self-driving car felt very worked out in our film so if if we can get comfortable with that and and that that is really working well i i, I think i could embrace that you know be able to take a nap while i'm driving somewhere but uh but in general um most of all most of the technology uh, makes me nervous in general. I didn't even have an email till 2005. So, you wow. know, I'm a, yeah, uh, I was getting faxed appointments <laughs> still. So I'm a little slow to certain things with tech. <laughs> that is incredible. Um, Naomi, in any romance film, but especially a film like this that has a lot to say about memories, I think the meet cute is so important. And both you and Mahershala do such a great job in that scene of conveying that initial spark. What was it like to shoot that sequence? And more importantly, is that how you eat a chocolate bar in real life? <laughs> what? <laughs> what was, what was the, unusual the about scene. the way I ate the chocolate bar? You sort of <laughs> nibbled it, you took nibbles off it, and then you put like, I, I'm, I'm a chomper. I like to take the whole thing and I'm just, you know, putting oh, it Oh, do you know, know what that is? It's probably because we'd shot it so many times. <laughs> By that point, we were sick of the chocolate. Yeah. So we're like, let's take tiny, tiny bits. But yeah, I, I love that scene. That was never meant to actually um, be the start of what well, it wasn't written originally, right, Ben, as the start of the, the movie. And I, I, I didn't realize, you know, that that was the way it had been, things had been moved around. But I think it's such a beautiful opening to the movie. I think it's absolutely perfect. Why did you make that decision, Ben, actually? We found earlier drafts of the script that actually started with, uh, with the train scene. Um, and we found in the edit that we were veering toward that sort of softer start, let's say, rather than the, you know, we had the, 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 the tree opening with, you know, and seeing the, the, the body and all that kind of thing um, that was in the original. But that was, things like that were feeling like they were representing the other side of this story rather than the sort of human and the love story. And I think with the train uh, scene and the way you guys actually just, it's just my favorite scene the way we're just instantly just in love with these characters and seeing them instantly have that connection felt like the right tonal way to start the to start the movie and it's it's been amazing the reaction that we're getting to that scene so far so it felt like a nicer opening tonally absolutely um given that this film ponders so many philosophical questions i would imagine that the conversations you had when the camera wasn't rolling were just as interesting as when the camera was rolling. Do you remember anything that was said between action and cut that really helped your creative process? And Nahash, let's start with you. Oh, wow. There were just so many things to consider. Um, the relationship is, is definitely a place that, um, that I would say that, that I started with uh, before Naomi and I even got to start speaking and, and uh, begin to just kind of gather my thoughts around that. 
and fatherhood. And then once we were all in the space together, you're like, yeah, I just think you, you definitely begin to bring up certain things that are, that are, um, that you want to make sure are resonating. One of the things that I will say that we don't talk a lot about that I, that I did speak at length uh, with Ben about was just the idea of two things. Um, part of the, of what makes this decision very difficult for Cam is is not necessarily being able to incorporate Poppy in this decision <laughs> to 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 move forward. Um, and and so we did speak at length about that, but also um, the idea of of being a black father twenty years from now, and some of the things that are that our communities have been through, being a child of the '80s here, and the way in which that has impacted our communities, and you know, so many uh, black men becoming like. Uh, victim to the prison industrial system or or what was going on in the 80s in terms of of drugs and the toxicity in our communities and how that led to young boys growing up without enough present fathers and so when you think about somebody who has a child on the way and um uh, or a family that has a child on the way and also has a, a 10 year old already one of the things that quietly was working underneath the surface for me in terms of um, um, some sort of like fuel under the character and some of the some something that sort of directed the decision is just thinking about protecting the family and and making sure that uh, our child has a father figure, having experienced watching Poppy lose her mother and go through the dep uh, a depression essentially from having lost her twin brother, which very few people can relate to. And so just the idea of making sure that there was a strong present father in the home uh, was something that, you know, came up in conversation and I, and, and I thought about quite a bit. Absolutely. Unfortunately, I saw the time we have. I could talk to you guys for hours about this film, uh, but this 20 minutes have been great. So thank you so much for your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, man. Thanks Appreciate so much. You, well, good. <laughs> Next time, let's do this in slip. person. Thanks. Speak I soon. I would yes, love that. Yes. I would love that. <laughs> And on that note, that is it for today's q and I'd like to thank Benjamin Cleary, Mahershala Ali, and Naomi Harris for their time. Swan Song is out in UK cinemas, including BFI South Bank, and streaming on Apple TV Plus from 17th of December. If you enjoyed this Q&A, then please subscribe to BFI's YouTube channel for more. Thank you, and good night.